What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we got to talk about what happened on this episode of uh, Monday Night Raw. Um, there was a lot of interesting things, a lot of stuff that's going to be playing out at Money in the Bank. It's, they're making Money in the Bank a must-watch show for sure. They, they, they're bringing up the excitement level for sure, and I'm, I'm loving what they're doing with the matches that they're starting to build. And what's been going on with Drew McIntyre, CM Punk... The Wyatt uh, VHS tape we saw tonight, which was probably the most impactful promo segment in a interact, like in, in a very creative way I've seen on Monday Night Raw in a very long time. Uh, we got a lot to talk about, man. Shout out to everyone that was part of the Monday Night Raw stream. I'm still kind of under the weather, but I definitely wanted to make sure I was there for that. Dub would have been a part of it, but he was busy. Um, but uh, he should be available later on this week, man. So let's get right into it. First things first, we start off the show, and it's Michael Cole and The Miz on commentary. Now, apparently, something happened again on the Pat McAfee show where the lights turned out, and it's implied that they did something to Pat McAfee. It's not often you see Pat McAfee not be in Indianapolis. Like, that doesn't even make sense. So he wasn't there, so they had Miz on commentary. So it's implied something, they did something to him. So we don't know what happened. Hey, we hope you're good, Pat, man. We miss you, bro. So Miz on commentary with Michael Cole, and I love what they did here. All you see is Drew McIntyre walk in front of them as the camera's showing the, the commentator's uh, table. And you see, see Drew walk in front of them, get in the ring. You hear a whole bunch of boos. He doesn't even get no intro music. It's, it's like a, a soft, cold open in the sense of him getting in the ring and kind of taking over the show a little bit. I love that they did that. He didn't come out there with intro music. He came out there with a mission. And he was basically letting it be known. He's done with all the fans and the people in the back that support CM Punk, that chant him. He doesn't care about y'all anymore. He's done with it. He's done trying to plead with y'all to understand that, you know, CM Punk is a bad guy. He's like, he screwed me over at WrestleMania. He screwed me over again at in my hometown in front of my family. I told my wife I was going to win, and he screwed me over at Clash at the Castle so I got my revenge. I beat the living crap out of him. And I hurt him. And I took something from him. And that's when he shows the bracelet. I guess a fan made the bracelet with AJ Lee name on it. His wife's name on it. And his dog. Two things that he care about the most. And I love this promo. Because now we're, we're getting into that territory of no return. Because... For him, he's like, I don't care about nobody else. I don't care about none of these fans. I'm talking to you, punk. I know you're in pain. I hope you're hurting. You're watching this right now. I'm going to be in the money in the bank. I put you there. I hurt you. I did that. So you got to live with that. But I'm, I'm not just going to stop there. I'm going to be in money in the bank. And I'm going to win money in the bank. And I'm going to cash in that same night. And become, once again, the World Heavyweight Champion. But this time, I'm not going to be alone. I'm going to have your family with me. And he looks up with the bracelet on. They're going to be with me. Your wife, your dog, they're going to be with me. And there's nothing you can do about it. I'm going to win the championship, win Money in Bank, win the championship with your family with me. I thought this was fantastic this was beautiful love this because now we're getting to that point of no return for both of these guys and it sets it up perfectly he got out the ring and he even kissed the bracelet as if this is really means so much to him it's only to spite cm punk and he walks out right and in my head i'm thinking this is great because what they're gonna do here CM Punk's not going to say nothing. And I don't want CM Punk to say anything. Because I shit, it's next weekend. Money in the Bank's next weekend. CM Punk's not going to say a damn thing. We're going to get to Money in the Bank. Drew's going to be in a situation. Because he's in a qualifying match with Sheamus and Ilya. But they're not winning. Drew's winning the match. He's going to climb that ladder. 
He's going to be right about to grab the briefcase. And CM Punk's going to come out there and push him off the ladder. Maybe push him through another ladder, tables, whatever. He's going to crash and burn. And CM Punk is going to get the bracelet from him and walk off. Oh my God, this is going to be good. And once again, this will be the third time in one year that this guy CM Punk has screwed him over. And then they can have their first match at SummerSlam. Fantastic. Love this opening. Love what they're doing with Drew. We also have to talk about what's happening with Judgment Day and Liv. So we get to Judgment Day's little backstage area. They got a new TV. They got a PlayStation 5. They're playing the new WWE 2K game. Dominic has a tray of chicken nuggets. And Damien comes in like, yo, what's going on here? And basically, Liv Morgan has hooked up everybody, you know, spruced up the judgment day backstage area got them a ps5 got them the game the new tv dominic's favorite thing chicken nuggets and you know he's like dom's like look i didn't ask for her to do this but she did this and everyone else is cool with it damien's like i don't i don't think this is a good good idea and then while damien's talking to him Liv sends him a text and he shows them and it's implied she sent him some nudes. Because everyone was like, whoa, even, even Damien Priest was like, oh, whoa. And <laughs> I love fucking like, Carlito was like, now nah, that's cool. So it's implied she sent him something or whatnot. So, and Damien's the only one that's like, hey, man, we is going to fucking kill you. You're going to have, you need to end this with her tonight, bro. Read. Damian Priest is the only one that's really opposed to this. Everyone else is kind of like, mm. okay. So, and then that's when Damian is kind of chastising them for not taking care of Braun Strowman. They need to take care of Braun Strowman. Cool. So, we get to that match. They actually show Chad Gable coming into the building. He's bandaged up with security or whatnot. And he's going to be in a triple threat match with Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed to see who's going to uh, uh, be one of the qualifiers for Money in the Bank. We also got to talk about uh, Braun Breaker and Ludwig. That was a great match, too. Obviously, Sheamus was going to get involved. And, you know, you, you knew that was going to kind of play out. And it was it was it was what you expect. They put on a good match. And I, I love what they're doing with Braun Breaker and Ludwig and Sheamus. I, I like this a lot. The intensity with all these guys. But it ends in uh, disqualification because Sheamus ended up kicking the lights out of Ludwig. And then as Sheamus was about to throw Ludwig through the table, Braun Breaker spears him and they all fall. So now Braun's mad. He's like, bro, people keep getting in my matches. Um, I'm trying to set up a situation where I can go one-on-one. -on -one with Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. We need to rectify this. And all of a sudden, Sami's standing right there with no fear. He's like, hey, bro, you looking for me? You you want that one-on-one? -on -one? No interference? All right. At Money in the Bank, Adam Pearce set it up. One-on-one -on -one for the Intercontinental Championship. And Braun Breaker's like, I bet I'm going to destroy you. Very interesting matchup. Looking forward to seeing how that plays out. I'm liking what they're doing with Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker is a very highlight spot of Monday Night Raw, and I love what they're doing with him. So let's get into another segment. I believe Liv came out there to address some things. She had on a, a Daddy Dom shirt. Liv is throwing it at Dominic at this point. And he comes, she's out there basically saying, like, hey, I know you're playing hard to get. It's cool. But, you know, I have another gift I want to show you if you come out here in person with me. Like, she's trying to throw it on him live in front of the audience. That's when Zelina comes out there. Zelina has some spice for him, basically calling Dom sloppy seconds and stuff like that. Then Dominic comes out there. And Dominic's trying to plead his case in saying, I want to help you, Zelina, so that way she can lose. He's still trying to be on the side of I don't want Liv as champion and Liv's like oh really but it's it's like he's he's folding every day more and more and more and Zelina's like I don't need your help 
And then that's when Liv attacks Selena. They start fighting. Ray comes out there trying to break things up. That's when Dominic pushed Ray. And then Liv's like, you saved me. You're my hero head ass. And that wasn't even really the case. So we get to the back and Dom's really not trying to engage in it. He's like, bro, that's that's my deadbeat dad. Like, oh, he's a deadbeat dad. I, like, it's not even that deep or whatever. But Rhea's, now Liv is really trying to break him down. That's when our truth comes into the picture. And our truth being the dumb dumb that he is, hilarious, but his character is dumb as hell. Our truth comes into the picture. So like, hey, Tominic calls him Tominic. Tominic, you know, he's playing hard to get, but I love to see love. So she ends up tricking him in putting on his tag team championship match on the line. The title's on the line against uh JD and Finn in the main event. And because uh, they write <laughs> hard truth as an idiot. He agrees to go talk to Adam Pierce. That's when Miz leaves commentary, and it's only Michael Cole on commentary because he's trying to stop him from doing that shit. And it's all part of Liv Morgan's plan to be a part of Judgment Day. That's all it is to spite real. So, uh, we get into the other triple. Uh, there was another triple threat match for a qualifying match with Gable and in um Braun Strowman and Bronson Reed. Gable's looking behind himself every few seconds as he's walking up the ramp, cutting a promo. You can tell he's still scared and still nervous about what's going on. So they have their match, and surprisingly, uh, obviously with the help of Judgment Day attacking. Um, Braun Strowman essentially uh, it was like a four on one attack. Surprisingly, surprisingly, uh, Gable ends up winning. Gable ends up pinning Bronson Reed, and he wins a qualifying match for Money in the Bank. But then, that's when the smoke, the lights start glitching. Like even before he got in the ring, it started to glitch. Then the the lights went out. The fireflies. In the crowd with the phone, the phone lights, they're waving, smoke in the ring. And then you see uh, pretty much Nikki Cross crawling through the smoke. Chad Gable falling back, and he he hightails it out of here. He should have he should have left a long time ago. Soon as some lights went out, he should have dipped. So Chad Gable leaves. But you only see Nikki Cross still crawling, and then she turns to Michael Cole. And then she has something. And Michael Cole's like kind of shook. And all the security people that they had around Michael Cole in the commentary booth, they're all laid out on the announce table. So they got packed up with ease. Who are they hiring for security? These guys, they may be future world champions, but right now they have a 50 overall. They're getting packed up easily. So she hands them a box. We don't know what's in the box. Michael Cole's scared, as he should be. And then she walks away and leaves. So we don't know what's in there. We come back from break. He opens up the box, crowd chanting, open up the box. And it's a VHS tape. And he's like, for kids who don't know, uh, this is a VHS tape. We haven't used these in over 20 years. So, and it says, play me. So he's like, hey, so he sent this off to get someone in the production truck, see if they can play it. We finally get what's played on the VHS tape. And this was really, really good really good you see uncle howdy and he's talking to someone like as in an interview and then you see he's talking to Bo dallas and i love this because this is where things cross the line of real and story he's asking questions that i've actually seen people allude to ideas of oh He's just going to take over Bray's legacy. Like, he's just going to, he's just using Bray's legacy. And Uncle Howdy has on a glove that says Bray on it. And he's asking him, he's like, one of the first things he asks is, how did it make you feel after Bray died? And just him, Bo, talking about this, the emotion, that was real. There was nothing fake about that. That felt 100% how he felt. How he lost his brother and he felt like no one else knows the pain he's dealing with. 
and how all he wanted to do was be with his brother, be at the top with his brother. That's all he cared about. It was really good and really emotional. And then Uncle Howdy asked him, how do you feel about using, like, using what he left? Essentially saying you're trying to gain popularity and, and, and momentum and buzz off the back of what Bray created. And people have said that. People have said that. Like, oh, he's Bo is just going to not in that verbatim, but people have alluded to WWE only doing this to monetize and capitalize off of Bray what what he created. And I'm sure he's probably seen people say, Oh, they just gonna pass it off to Bo or whatnot. He's gonna be a great value version of his brother. Like, you know, in a sense of like like he didn't probably have any input in what was being said. If you watch the documentary, they were having input with each other of what they wanted to do. This wasn't just only a Bray thing. So, and I like he already responded. He's like, that wasn't even what his intentions was. He was basically saying, y'all forgot about him. Y'all thought it was just supposed to be over and that's it. Y'all forgot. And I'm here to let y'all know, to remind y'all. And what I'm saying doesn't do it justice. You got to go watch this for yourself. It's really heartbreaking in a sense. Because I I didn't think they were going to even go that far of even acknowledging Bray's death. They acknowledged his death. Like, how did that feel when your brother died? So, hey, when y'all get a chance, just go watch this. This is probably the best part of the show. Just in realness, entertainment wise, and how the feelings you were left with. It gave me chills. It did. I was speechless. I didn't really know what to say there. So, after that, there's a situation where Damien Priest goes back to the Judgment Day area. And you see Liv leave the room. And then you open it up. She's eating a chicken nugget. And then you open it up and only Finn Balor's in there. And he's like, what the fuck's going on? I'm over here to address Seth Rollins. What the hell's going on here? Why the fuck is she in here? And he was like, hey, bro, be easy. She really not that bad. She just hooked us up with a tag team championship match tonight in the main event. And Damian Priest, he's really not caring too much. He's, he's like, bro, Dominic needs to be the one to kind of end this, bro. Like, what are we doing? But he's more focused on what he got going on. So he's like, hey, man, good luck on your tag team championship match tonight. Once again, Liv is doing everything she can to win over everybody. It's just Damian Priest is not falling for it. So we get out there, Damian Priest doing his promo. He's basically saying, you know what I'm saying? I, I respect you, Seth, or whatnot, but I'm not trying to be like you. I'm, I'm trying to be like myself, who I'm trying to, you know, be in this situation uh, as the world heavyweight champion. You're not beating me at Money in the Bank. Seth comes out there. And I love what they did here because they really, they really started spinning things. This wasn't, this is just a regular match. And a lot would think that Seth would win here, but they added a little bit of a situation because he said, you're right. You are the world champion, world heavyweight champion. But the thing is your past few matches, you've only won because of other people you like to say you like to do it by yourself but it seems like you can only retain the championship with the assist of cm punk the assist of judgment day see the difference between you and me is i can win on my own so how about this how about we sweeten the pot if i lose that money in the bank as long as you're a champion i can never i can never go for the title as long as you're a champion, I don't get no more rematches for the World Heavyweight Championship. But if you lose to me at Money in the Bank, we're going to test your theory out. You leave the judgment day. You be on your own for good. Since you say you can beat people on your own, you leave the judgment day for good. And what Damian Priest says here is, for me, solidifies why he's going to lose. Because his words were, hey, the Judgment Day need me more than I need them. And once he said that, 
that that was that was the proof. It it definitely solidified solidified for me. Damian Priest is losing because of course they heard that. Of course the Judgment Day members heard him say that, and what happened at the end of the show kind of definitely alludes to that even more. So they agreed on it. So that's going to be an extra stipulation, a gentleman's agreement. If I, if Seth loses, he can never go for the World Heavyweight Championship as long as Damian Priest is the champ. But if Damian Priest wins, I mean, but if Damian Priest loses, then he's out of judgment day. Then Gunther comes out. Gunther's like, I'm very excited about this match. Can't wait for this match to happen. But it doesn't matter who wins because y'all will be lesser men in comparison to me, because we all know at the end of the day, Gunther's going to win the World Heavyweight Championship at SummerSlam. And I just think the match on paper, it's better with it being Seth versus um, Gunther. That's the better match on paper. That's a, that's a SummerSlam worthy match. I wouldn't have a problem if it's Damian. But I think that's just a SummerSlam worthy match. And I do think, you know, Seth is going to be a transitional champion. But, I mean, it's to fucking Gunther. I don't know what to tell you. So, and I do think the story they can tell with Damian Priest losing because of Judgment Day, I think that's going to be a great story. And the reason why I say that, because at the end of the show, the main event, R-Truth, Miz versus... Uh, JD and um, and Finn Balor. Now there was a lot of Judgment Day shenanigans. You knew that was going to happen. But then Liv comes out there. Liv comes out there and she's R-Truth being a dum-dum trying to give R-Truth a hug mid-match and R-Truth being a dum-dum goes over there and gives her a hug and then she jumps off the top jump from a uh, jump from the ring apron and ends up choking R-Truth from the top rope, and that gave the opening for Finn Balor to kick uh, R-Truth in the corner, go up top, hit the coup de gras on R-Truth, and become new tag team champions with JD. Yep. They're your new Raw tag team champs. And you see Finn Balor, JD, holding the championships, and then you see Liv out there. And Finn Balor and JD, they shrug like, fuck it. She helped us. And they all have the gold. And she looked at Finn Balor as this is the opening once she screwed over our truth She's trying to get good with them because she wants to take everything from Rhea. And this is why I say I can see a situation because they're going to remember Damian Priest hasn't been helping them, if y'all think about it. Damian Priest has not been helping none of them, really. He's only cared about him as the champion. He hasn't been out there doing distractions or nothing. They have his back, and they get yelled at when they come out there to help him. And I'm sure there's going to be a situation where Finn brings that up. Like, Liv has done more than you've done as our supposed leader. We come out there to help you. You get mad of us, mad at us. She came out there, got us a tag team champions match, and helped us win. She, she's she been playing her part. And I'm sure Finn will bring up the fact, didn't you say we would need you more than you would need us? You said that, right? I can see Finn Balor screwing him over. I can see because that's a better story. I wouldn't have Damian Priest lose Queen. I would have a situation where maybe Finn Balor screws him over. Just to one up him. Just just to spite him. So it's gonna be very interesting to see what they say about that because he agreed if he loses, he's out of judgment day. Why would you make you know Finn can be like, why would you make that agreement? Why would you say that? Very interesting story beats here. So I love what they did with this Monday Night Raw. They really set up some stuff for Money in the Bank and SummerSlam. Can't wait for both of these PLEs, man. This was an enjoyable Monday Night Raw, man. Comment down below. Let me know your favorite part of the show. Let me know what you guys looking forward to uh, for Money in the Bank. It's literally next weekend. 
I'm excited. Y'all let me know uh, if y'all enjoyed the show tonight, man. What y'all rate the show on a scale of 1 to 10? But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K. I'm Stingham, Speedy, YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.